Good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Windows 10 segment heap internals. We are in South Seas C. Your speaker today is Mark Vincent Yassen. So before we begin, just a couple of brief notes. You'll be hearing these over the course of the day. Um, please stop by the business hall, which is located downstairs in Bayside AB. The Black Hat Arsenal is on the Poem Palm foyer up here. And of course, the Arsenal reception is at 5 PM. If you haven't picked up your merchandise, today is your last chance to visit the Black Hat Swag and Bookstore. And we encourage you to visit the Kali Linux Lab in Mandalay Bay A. Thank you for putting your phone on vibrate. Without further ado, your speaker. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for attending my talk. Uh, I'm Mark Vincent Yasson. I'm from IBM X Force. And today I'm going to share with you my research of the new heap implementation in Windows 10 called uh, the segment heap. My talk is, uh, consists of three parts. The internals where I'll talk about the architecture and uh, different components of the segment heap. The security mechanisms where I'll talk about the different mechanisms in place that uh, make it difficult or unreliable to attack heap metadata. And in certain cases, uh, makes it unreliable to uh, manipulate the layout of the heap. Case study is uh, where I'll discuss and how to manipulate the layout of the heap that is managed by the segment heap in order to uh, reliably uh, leverage uh, memory corruption vulnerability for an, ar for an ar arbitrary write in the context of the edge content process. And the demonstration will follow. Some notes before we proceed. A uh, very detailed white paper uh, is available, which you should be able to download from uh, Black, Black Hat's uh, website sometime after this talk. And it, is, uh, it contains the details about the data structures, the diagrams of the algorithms, and names of internal functions in case you are interested in doing your own research of the segment heap. Also, this paper and uh, presentation is uh, based on the 64-bit and TDL from uh, Windows 10 Red, Redstone 1 preview build uh, 14295. So with that, let's begin. Here's the architecture of the segment heap. It consists of uh, four components, the backend part, here, uses the NT Memory Manager APIs for uh, creating and uh, managing the segments where backend blocks are uh, allocated from. And on the top of that is the Low Fragmentation Heap, or LFH. It is similar in purpose to the LFH in the older heap implementation, but as you'll see later, the data structures used are different. The LFH uh, depends on the backend for creating the LFH uh, subsegments where the LFH blocks are allocated from. Another, another component on the top of the backend is the variable size allocation component, or VS. It also uses the backend to create the VS subsegments where uh, VS blocks are allocated from. From its name, its uh, difference from the LFH is that uh, in VS, the blocks in the VS subsegments are variable in size. It starts with a large uh, free block, and then it is split into different sizes as allocation request uh, comes in. Finally, the large blocks uh, allocation component here uh, services a uh, large allocation request. It, uh, it directly uses the NT uh, memory manager APIs for the allocation and the freeing of the large blocks. Another part to notice is that uh, for allocation sizes uh, less than or equal to 16,368 bytes, the allocation request will be service will only be serviced by the LFH if the LFH uh, bucket for that uh, particular allocation size is, uh, is uh, activated. If not activated, it will be uh, serviced by the variable size allocation component. So when is the segment heap enabled in the process? So currently it is an opt-in feature. A Windows app, uh, formerly called uh, Modern or Metro apps, are opted in by default. This includes uh, apps from the Windows Store and more importantly, uh, Microsoft Edge. Dependencies or uh, components used by Edge that do not use a custom heap manager will, uh, will use the segment heap. Uh, additionally, executables uh, with those listed names are also opted in by default. This, uh, this um, encompasses the different uh, system uh, processes. 
The older heap implementation, the NT heap is still the default use for uh, traditional uh, Win32 applications. If you want to enable or disable segment heap for a particular executable, you can use the front end heap debug option in the image file execution uh, options uh, registry entry. Or if you want to enable or uh, disable segment heap for, like, for all ex executables, you can modify the enabled entry in the segment heap key under the current control set, control session, uh, manager uh, register key. So for an illustration, here's, an, uh, here's the edge content process heaps when uh, edge is initially loaded. As you can see, the default process heap, the first heap in the list is managed by the segment heap. Also, the MSVCRT heap, the third heap in the list is also managed by the segment heap. A thing to note that even if a segment heap is enabled in the process, not all heaps created by the process will, be, will, use, uh, will use the segment heap. Example of these are the shared heaps and heaps that are not uh, growable. In the illustration, the second heap is a shared heap and therefore it is uh, still managed by the anti heap. Next, in this, in this pre presentation, I will be uh, mentioning about the heap base. The heap base is the address returned by heap create or RTL create heap when the heap is created. You can quickly check if a heap is uh, managed by the segment heap by looking at the D word at uh, offset 10 hex. If the value is DDEE, DDEE, it means that it is managed by the segment heap. At the top of the heap base is the segment heap structure here. It contains the state of the four uh, segment heap components such as the large block allocation, uh, the back end. The structures for tracking the VS and LFH state are more complex and therefore they are stored as a substructure called the uh, uh, VS context and LFH context. Also, uh, since the LFH buckets are dynamically activated at runtime, instead of being uh, stored in this uh, LFH uh, context, the reserve memory below the segment heap here is dynamically commute, committed to uh, store uh, LFH bucket related structures. And that is why the lower part of the heap base is called the LFH context extension. Oh, so after discussing the architecture and configuration and the heap base, I'll now discuss the four different components of the segment heap, and I'm gonna start with the backend. So the backend is used for allocation sizes greater than uh, 128 to uh, 508 uh, KB, and the backend blocks have a page size uh, allocation granularity. The backend operates on uh, segment structures here which are one megabyte chunks of virtual memory allocated via NT allocate uh, virtual memory. And the segments owned by the heap are tracked by the segment list head found in the heap base. And the segment is, uh, consists of two parts, the segment, the segment uh, header and the data part where the block backend blocks are allocated from. So uh, zooming in on the, on the segment, so the header is consists of a uh, page range uh, descriptors here that describes each page in the segments. Uh, there's one uh, page range descriptor for every page. For example, uh, page range uh, descriptor two uh, describes this page and page range descriptor three describes uh, this page. One of the main fields uh, in the page range uh, descriptor is the range flag here. Uh, it is a bit flag that describes whether the page is uh, committed or uh, busy or allocated. Next, uh, because uh, backend blocks can span multiple uh, pages, there is what is called the uh, first uh, page uh, range descriptors, which are basically the page range descriptor for the first page of the backend block. Uh, first page uh, range descriptor are marked uh, as such by uh, the, the first flag in the range flag field and they have additional field set, such as the size field, which is equal to the size of the backend block uh, in pages. Finally, another important item to discuss is that for, uh, for free backend blocks, their uh, first page range descriptor is uh, inserted to a backend uh, free tree. And when inserting the first page range descriptor, the key field here is used. I'll further discuss the backend, the backend feed tree and, and the key field in the later slide. 
Here is an example of a set of page range uh, descriptors uh, that describes uh, busy block. Uh, page range descriptor two describes this this page, and then page range descriptor three describes this page. They state they state that the pages are both uh, committed here and then uh, allocated, means uh, which means busy. Uh, also, the page range descriptor uh, for page two, which is the start of the block, is marked as the first here. And therefore, the size field is, to is the total number of pages of the backend block. So to track the free back uh, backend blocks, the first page range uh, descriptor of uh, free backend blocks, as I previously mentioned, uh, are inserted to this uh, backend free tree. The key used for inserting nodes to this uh, backend uh, free tree is a uh, word size value, in which the high byte is, uh, is the number of pages of the backend block. So here, 23, and then 21, and then uh, 4F. And the low byte is the encoded uh, commit count. Now, uh, encoded commit count is equivalent to the bitwise NAT of the number of committed pages that the block has. In this example, the blocks are fully decommitted, and that's why their value are FFX. The key is uh, set up this way so that uh, when searching for uh, free backend blocks, uh, a best fit search is done, and the most committed blocks are given preference. So in other words, if uh, two blocks with equal size uh, will fit the allocation request, the most committed block will be selected. So for allocation, as I mentioned, uh, best fit search is done with the most committed block uh, given preference. If a large block is selected, the large block is split. And for, uh, for, for freeing, the to be, to be freed block is uh, coalesced with neighboring free blocks to reduce uh, fragmentation. So that's the back end, and now the second component, the variable size allocation. Variable size allocation, or VS, is uh, used for allocation sizes less than or equal to 128 KB, and has uh, 16 bytes uh, allocation granularity. BC blocks have a 16 byte header at the beginning of each block, and VS blocks are allocated from uh, VS subsegments here, which are just a special type of uh, backend block. And VS subsegments are tracked using the subsegment uh, list here, found in the VS context field in the heap base. And then zooming in to a VS subsegment, two of the most important fields is the commit bitmap. Which is uh, which tracks which part of the VS subsegment are uh, are committed, and the other one is the size of the VS subsegment. So after uh, offset uh, 30 hex is where the VS blocks are are located. So when a new subseg when a new VS subsegment is uh, created, the whole area here is a uh, one large uh, one large free free block. It is just split into different sizes as allocation request uh, comes in. So of all the different components of the segment heap, only the VS blocks have a header at the beginning of each block. BC blocks have a 16 byte header here. And the first eight byte is uh, are, are encoded. Uh, I'll discuss the encoding in the security mechanisms part of the talk. So the, the first eight byte of this uh, BC block header is also found in the, in the header of a, of a free BS block. And the memory cost field is, uh, is only significant in FreeBS blocks. It is, it is a value computed based on how much portion of the FreeBS block is committed. The more portion of the free block is, uh, uh, the more portion of the free block has is, uh, is committed, the lower uh, memory, the, the lower the memory cost is. So unsafe size is the size of the block, and uh, unsafe previous size is the size of the previous block. And the allocated field is a non-zero value if the block is busy. So another important field is the, is the bit here. It is the a, a news, uh, news bytes field. Uh, it is the bit that uh, means that there is a difference between the user requested size and the total block size, which happens due to the allocation uh, granularity. The value of the difference is, is stored at the end of the VS blocks in the last two bytes. Finally, the free BS blocks are node of the VS free tree, and that is why there's a node field here starting at uh, offset 8. 
So similar to the backend, uh, VS also has a free tree for tracking the free VS blocks. The nodes of the free tree are the free VS blocks uh, header, and the key for inserting nodes to the free tree is a D word size value in which the high word is the size of the block here, 0101, 00F8, and then the 0301. And the low word is the memory cost, which I previously discussed. The more committed portion of the block, the lower the memory cost is. So similar to the backend, the key is set up that way so that when searching for free BS blocks, a best fit uh, search is done with the most committed blocks uh, given preference. In other words, if two BS blocks with equal size will fit the allocation request, the most committed block will be selected. For the allocation, as I mentioned, a uh, best fit search with a preference to the most committed block is uh, conducted. And uh, large free uh, blocks are split unless the size of the resulting uh, remaining block will be less than 20 hex bytes because the 20 hex bytes is the size of a free BS block header. So for freeing, the to be freed block is uh, coalesced with the uh, neighboring freed blocks to uh, reduce uh, fragmentation. So that's the back end in the VS allocation component. Now we go to the low fragmentation heap. The low fragmentation heap or LFH uh, services allocation requests for less than or equal to uh, 16,368 bytes. And the allocation granularity depends on the allocation size. So similar to the LFH in the NT-heap, the LFH uh, prevents fragmentation by allocating uh, similarly sized blocks from larger pre-allocated blocks of memory, which in this particular case, the LFH uh, subsegments. LFH subsegments are, are just, a special, uh, just a special type of uh, backend block. And uh, LFH or bucket-related structures here, which are, which are allocated from the LFH context extension, uh, points to these uh, LFH uh, subsegments. Allocation sizers are distributed into uh, buckets. So initially, all bucket, buckets are not uh, activated. And for each bucket, there's a counter tracking the allocation and free requests for the allocation sizes corresponding to the bucket. The bucket is activated on the 17th active allocation for the bucket's corresponding allocation size. And another way to activate the bucket is if the allocation request for the bucket's uh, corresponding allocation size reaches uh, 2040, uh, regardless if the blocks were previously freed. So another concept of uh, LFH is the affinity slots. Affinity slots actually own the LFH uh, subsegments where the LFH blocks are allocated from. And the heap manager assigns processors to these uh, affinity slots. So initially, when the bucket is activated, only one affinity slot is, uh, is created, and all processors are assigned to it. So now imagine that this uh, processor here is assigned to this affinity slot. So contention in, uh, in accessing these uh, LFH uh, subsegments uh, can occur. So if there's too, if there's too much contention detected, uh, when the LFH, uh, if there's too much con contention detected, uh, when the LFH sub subsegments are accessed, a new uh, finish slot is created with their own set of uh, LFH subsegments, and the processor is reassigned to this uh, to this new affinity slot. So LFH subsegments are where the LFH blocks are allocated from. The top of the LFH subsegment is the heap LFH uh, subsegment structure. Some of its uh, important fields are the free count uh, field, which is the number of uh, free LFH blocks in the subsegment, and another is the block count field, which is the total number of uh, LFH blocks in the, the subsegment has. So uh, another important uh, fields are the block size field and the first block offset field, which are both encoded. The encoding I will talk about later. So uh, finally, the block bitmap is uh, which tracks the which tracks the state of uh, LFH blocks if they are uh, busy or they have uh, unused bytes. And the LFH subsegment metadata, and so after the LFH subsegment metadata here are the LFH blocks here. So focusing on the LFH block bitmap, each LFH block in the subsegment is represented by uh, two bits in the block bitmap. 
the first bit is the busy bit, and the other bit is the unused bytes bit. If the unused bytes bit is set, it means that there's a difference between the requested allocation size and the total block size, which happens due to the alignment to whatever the allocation granularity is. Uh, the difference is stored in this la last two bytes of the LFH block. Also, the LFH uh, block bitmap is uh, div divided into 64 bit chunks, which I call the bitmap bits, and each of these uh, represents uh, 32 uh, LFH uh, blocks. The allocation from the LFH is different because it involves some uh, randomization. For the allocation, the allocation routine uh, first select uh, bitmap bits from the block bitmap, in which the starting point is uh, depends on the free, on a free hint. So once a bitmap bit is selected, it will randomly select a bit position in the bitmap bits where the busy bit is clear. So once a, once a random bit position is selected, it will set the busy bit and if necessary, the unused byte bit. The illustration shows an actual result of, an, uh, of the allocation randomization, whereas the first allocated block is here, and the second allocated block is here, and the third allocated block is here, and so on. For freeing, among other things, the blocks uh, BC and unused byte bit from the block bitmap is cleared. This is just a simplified uh, explanation of the LFH allocation and freeing. And for a more detailed ex explanation, please, uh, please refer to the white paper. And finally, the fourth component of the segment heap, the large block uh, allocation component. The large blocks allocation component uh, handles alloc allocation requests for sizes uh, greater than uh, 508 uh, KB. Large blocks are allocated and freed using the virtual, uh, mem virtual memory functions provided by the anti memory manager. The large block here do not have a header at the beginning of each block. Uh, instead, uh, metadata, the metadata for each block is, are allocated from a separate uh, metadata heap. And for the heap manager to identify if the block is a large block allocation, its address is, is marked as a large, as large uh, de depending on the large allocation bitmap here. So the large allocation is straightforward since uh, there's no free list to consult. First, the block's metadata is allocated from a separate metadata heap. Then the block's uh, virtual memory is allocated and then the block's address is uh, marked in the large allocation bitmap. The freeing is also straightforward. This is just the reverse process of the large block allocation uh, process. Oh, before entering, uh, before en ending the internals part of the talk, I want to discuss the block padding, which will affect the layout of the segment heap uh, blocks. Just in case you are investigating a fraud process, in which the segment heap is enabled, but that process is not opted in by default to use the segment heap. Take note that there will be a 16 byte padding added before the user data portion of the block. As shown, this is a modified layout of the backend block here, and a BC block here, and an LFH block. So to summarize, there are four components of the segment heap, the, the backend, the VS allocation, the LFH, and the large block allocation component. The data structures of the segment heap are largely uh, different compared to the data structures of the anti heap. And free trees are used instead of a free list. Of all the components, only VS blocks have a header at the beginning of each block. And the best fit search algorithm with a preference to most committed block is used uh, by the backend and the VS component, while the F LFH allocation uh, the selection for the free BS block for the free blocks are randomized. So that's it for the internals and in the second part of the talk, I'll discuss the mechanisms that are added in the segment heap that make it difficult or unreliable to attack a heap metadata and in certain cases make it unreliable to perform heap layout manipulation. The security mechanisms is well, is well known. The subsegment and segment lists are linked lists. So to prevent uh, classic arbitrary writes due to uh, corrupted uh, linked list nodes, checks are added when removing and uh, inserting nodes from a uh, linked list. 
if the check failed, uh, the fast fail mechanism will be triggered and this will cause the process to, uh, to terminate immediately. So similar to a uh, linked list node corruption, an attacker is also, if an attacker uh, can also cause an arbitrary write if, if three nodes are attacker controlled. In this, in this example, the attacker may have uh, controlled the parent value of this uh, left child. If, the, uh, if, if that is the case, when the parent of this left child is uh, manipulated, an arbitrary write may occur. So to prevent this, the NTDL functions for manipulating the arbitraries will follow the parent value and then check if one of each child is indeed uh, the left child. And if not, uh, uh, there will be a failure in validation. It will cause the fast spell mechanism to be triggered, causing the immediate uh, process termination. Next, to make it unreliable to guess the heap address, a random size uh, free memory is created before the heap base, and this random size is a multiple uh, of 64 KB. Then to uh, prevent uh, overflow from uh, BS blocks here, and uh, from LFH blocks here, from correcting data outside the sub-segments where they are located, uh, guard pages are added at the, e at the end of uh, VS sub-segments here, and the LFH uh, sub-segment. So also to prevent an overflow from corrupting uh, data outside uh, the large block, a guard bridge is also added at the end of the large block here. And backend blocks, uh, on the other hand, do not have a guard page, allowing an overflow to corrupt adjacent data outside the backend block. Next, there are function pointers is to, it's stored in the heap base. Assuming that an attacker is able to uh, determine the address of the heap, and that an attacker has a control flow guard uh, bypass, one way to control execution flow is to uh, modify the function pointers uh, found at the hit base. To protect these uh, function pointers from uh, trivial modification, they are, they are encoded using the heap key and, uh, and the VS context address or the LFH context address. Next, uh, VS blocks have a block header at the beginning of each block and these uh, headers here are a potential target for overflows. To protect important parts of the VS block header from a trivial modification, they are encoded using the LFH key and the block address. So similarly, the LFH subsegment headers also have some important fields that an attacker may leverage. Again, to protect these important fields from a trivial modification, they are encoded using the LFH key and uh, LFH uh, subsegment address here. Then finally, to make the uh, ex exploitation of uh, LFH-based uh, buffer overflows and use, use after freeze uh, unreliable, as I previously uh, discussed, uh, the LFH run to randomly select which uh, free, B free LFH uh, block to use. To make it, uh, to make it uh, this makes it unreliable to place a target LFH block adjacent to a LFH block that can be overflowed. It also makes it unreliable to uh, reuse a recently freed LFH block in case of a uh, user use after free exploits. To summarize important uh, metadata encoded, uh, linked nodes and tree nodes are checked. Uh, detected corruption will cause uh, an immediate termination of the process. Guard pages and some randomization are added. Also, it will be difficult to perform a precise layout manipulation for, for the LFH due to the randomization, uh, but the backend and VS allocation, which do not use a uh, randomization, are more, over, are more uh, welcoming to heap layout manipulation. In the final part of the presentation, I'm gonna talk about how the layout of BFs, BS allocations can be precisely uh, manipulated. In this final part of the presentation, I'll discuss the layout of uh, how the layout of um, heap managed by the segment heap can be man manipulated. I'll use a vulnerability in the Windows PDF library that I discovered and, uh, and was patched by Microsoft uh, last, mar last March. First, the vulnerability in this case study is found in the Win uh, WinRT PDF. I built in a PDF library in Windows since uh, Windows 8.1. One interesting aspect of a WinRT PDF is that it is used by Edge uh, to render PDFs. Therefore, uh, remote code execution vulnerabilities 
in, uh, in this PDF library can uh, potentially be used in edge uh, drive-by attacks. So in the illustration, uh, 25 by 25 uh, pixel size embed element references a, a PDF file, which, uh, which WinRTPDF would then render. If the PDF exploits a remote code execution vulnerability, then an attacker may take control of the edge content, edge content process. The vulnerability that I'll, dis that I'll discuss involves the PostScript open stack. This PostScript open stack is uh, used when interpreting a uh, PostScript calculator functions embedded in uh, PDFs. The PostScript open stack is a vector of uh, 65 hex uh, C type 4 operand pointers here. And each of these points to a C type 4 operand uh, structure where the first D word is the type and the second D word is the value rep uh, representing the value in the PostScript open stack. And this is where the segment heap comes to the picture. This uh, PostScript open stack is allocated from the MS VCRT heap. And in the context of the edge content process, this MS VCRT heap is managed by the segment heap. Now for the vulnerability, the issue is that the PostScript interpreter fails to properly validate if the PostScript open index is already past the end of a PostScript open stack, wherein it allows the PostScript calculator function to push a, val a value to invalid index 65 of the PostScript open stack. Now, if an attacker is able to implant an uh, attacker control address right after the PostScript open stack here, the attacker can perform a memory write operation to the attacker control address thereby an arbitrary, thereby an arbitrary write. Now that we have an understanding of the vulnerability, the plan to implant the target address after the PostScript operand stack is as follows. So we allocate a control buffer and set a offset 3 to wait with the target address. And uh, we free the control buffer. And when the PostScript operand stack is allocated, the free VS block of the free control block buffer will be returned by the heap manager and will be used uh, for the PostScript open stack. So this looks like a good plan, but this requires the ability to uh, allocate and free control buffers. Unfortunately, WinRT PDF still does not support JavaScript embedded in PDF. That would potentially allow the arbitrary allocation of freeing of, uh, of blocks from the MSBCRT heap. So that is a problem, and uh, one solution is that it is this. This is where the chakra and the chakras array buffer implementation comes in. Using JavaScript code in, a, in, in an HTML, an arbitrary size block can be allocated from the MS MSVCRT heap by instantiating an array buffer object. In the illustration, an array buffer with a 340 hex as the size in, instantiated. Because the data buffer of the array buffer is allocated using a uh, MSVCRT uh, malloc, the, da the data buffer is eventually allocated from the MSVCRT heap. And putting the arbitrary values inside, inside the data buffer is, is as simple as executing the code here. If elevation bucket activation is needed, we just need to sequentially instantiate uh, 17 RI buffers with the same size here. For freeing the data buffer, we just need to remove our references to the array buffer and then trigger garbage collection. But again, unfortunately, collect garbage does not work in edge. You can call it, you can call it, but, uh, but, it function, but its uh, functionality is disabled. But further looking at the array buffer implementation, the size passed to the array buffer constructor here is added to an uh, internal chakra engine counter. If that counter reaches uh, 192 MB in machines with more than uh, one gig of memory, a concurrent garbage collection will be triggered. So to perform garbage collection, one, one just need to instantiate an array buffer with a size of 192 MB, and a delay is then introduced to let the garbage uh, collection to, uh, to finish, and then the succeeding JavaScript code is executed. So now that we have the, the capability to allocate a block and the free a block from the MS, MSVCRT heap. But there's, there's another problem to overcome. The, if the elevation bucket, uh, 
The problem is that the highest 16 bit of the target address will be overridden here by the anus bytes uh, value. Even if a larger control buffer is allocated in feed, the heap manager will split the size to, uh, to where there's, there are still eight anus bytes. So this is a showstopper because the target address will become invalid due to the corruption. Now to solve this problem, internals of a VS allocation can be a leverage. If we allocate uh, and free a uh, control buffer that is large enough so, there, so that there will be more unused bytes here, and small enough so that the free block of the control buffer will not be split, then the target address will remain intact here. So in this case, uh, 340 hex bytes control buffer is allocated and freed. And again, there's another problem. The, this free block here may become, uh, may be coalesced with neighboring uh, free blocks before the, before the postscape open stack is allocated in, in its place, thereby reducing the reliability of the arbitrary write. Now, to solve that problem, instead of one controlled buffer, 15 controlled buffers are allocated. And in an alternating manner, eight are left VC while seven are freed to prevent the free blocks from, uh, from being uh, coalesced. So in an actual allocation pattern, so the, some of the control buffers may be allocated in a different uh, VS subsegment or allocate from a uh, separate or uh, larger free blocks. Therefore, the allocation, the actual allocation pattern will not always exactly match the illustration. But nonetheless, this increases the, the chance that at least one or more free controlled buffer will not, will not be coalesced. And then uh, finally, there's one, there's another problem to be solved. Before the postscript open stack will be allocated in one of these uh, free, uh, free uh, controlled buffers, these free blocks may be used for a uh, small allocation request and they may be split. And therefore, further reducing the reliability of the arbitrary write. Now, to solve that final problem, we just need to activate the LFH bucket for these uh, smaller allocation sizes. So, that in, so, instead of, so instead of the AVS allocation component servicing them, the LFH component will handle the allocation request, therefore uh, protecting the free, the free blocks from unintended use. So to summarize, the JavaScript code in the HTML file will manipulate the layout of the MSVCRT heap uh, using arrive buffers. Uh, once the heap layout is manipulated, an embed element here, referencing the concept PDF file is injected to the page. Uh, WinRT PDF will then load the PDF file and will then request for the allocation of the PostScript open stack. The heap manager will return one of the free uh, controlled uh, buffer blocks and there you go, the target address is uh, implanted right after the postscript operand stack. And the PDF just needs to trigger the vulnerability and the arbitrary write can be achieved. So if, if, if everything works as planned, in the demonstration you will see something like this, where WinDBG will be loaded as a post-mortem debugger to a crash edge con content process. The crash is due to our write access violation here. Uh, where the address of the, mem of the memory write operation is uh, fully controlled here, and the high 32 bits of the, of the value to write to is uh, controlled. So I'll now st start up the demo. This is the VM that serves the, the HTML file that uh, manipulates the heap layout and the uh, proof of concept PDF that triggers the vulnerability. And this is the VM where H will be loaded. And here you go. As you can see, the, the target address is uh, fully controlled, and the high 32 bits of the value is uh, controlled. 
And to verify, we are in the edge uh, content process. So to summarize, the case study showed that uh, precise layout manipulation uh, is achieved in heaps uh, managed by the segment heap. Specifically, it showed how the layout of uh, VS allocations can be controlled and how the LFH uh, can be used to uh, preserve the control the VS allocation layout. The two main elements that allow the precise heap layout manipulation in the case study was uh, the scripting uh, capability provided by, by the Chakra JavaScript engine and the, and the common heap used by uh, the Chakra's array buffer and WinRTPDF uh, port script uh, interpreter. Finally, when developing a proof of concepts, one might encounter issues that seem to be unresolvable, such as the target address corruption described in the case study. In cases uh, such as those, uh, understanding the internals of the heap implementation will, pro will sometimes provide the solution. To conclude, the internals of the segment heap and the NT heap are largely different. Although some components of the segment heap and the NT heap are uh, uh, have the same purpose, the data structures supporting them are uh, are mostly unlike the, their counter their counterpart in the NT heap. Security mechanisms are comparable with the NT heap. Since the data structures are new, uh, these new data structures are interesting for for uh, metadata attack research. So, in terms of heap uh, layout manipulation. The case studies show that uh, given the capability to perform uh, arbitrary allocation and free, uh, precise layout manipulation of heap managed by the segment heap is achievable. Uh, finally, I encourage you to read the, bio, the white paper if you are further interested in, in this topic. These are some uh, prior works and references. Additional references can be found in the white paper. And thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Thank you.